Why is Christmas crucial? We often get caught up in parties, presents, food. We're busy cooking, preparing, cleaning. That's all necessary and good. But let's get in focus. Let's not forget the value of Christmas. Last year I talked about what Christmas meant. What is it? This year I'll talk about why it's crucial. Let's start off from the beginning. Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve were perfect, sinless human beings unlike us. They walked with God. They knew God personally until they fell and they got kicked out of Eden. And from that time to when Jesus came, it's a whole story of redemption of how Jesus was redeeming his people. The story of Israel getting out of Egypt, out of slavery. When you sinned you had to bring a sacrifice to cover that it didn't free you it only covered it and if you did it again you had to bring sacrifice again that was all pointing to jesus that there was once be a sacrifice made that would be once and for all satisfied if i disobeyed my parents or did something else that was against the law i would have to be stoned all of this pointed to Jesus, the fact that we are sinners, we cannot save ourselves, we need a savior. If we read Micah chapter 5 verse 2, it says, But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Bethlehem, a small city who are too little to be among the clans of Judah. You're too small. You're too uns insignificant. And guess what? Jesus came to that very insignificant place. We'll look at later why he came to Bethlehem. But he came to a place where it's small. No one cares about it. If we read Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. These are some names of Jesus, but unto us a child is born. This is what Christmas is all about. It's about Jesus. It's not about presents and parties and fellowship that does follow. But the main point, the main reason that we even celebrate Christmas, we all celebrate it differently, but... The way we are supposed to do it is to remember Christ. A son is given. He's a wonderful counselor. We need a counselor. We go to Jesus. Mighty God. A God that can do anything. Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. The peace that we so need today. And why did Jesus come for? Did he really have to come here? Well, I'll answer that. He didn't have to come here. We are sinners. We deserved the wrath of God. We deserved to be in hell. We deserved to be separated from God eternally. But if we read Luke chapter 5, verse 27 to 32. After this, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, follow me. And leaving everything, he rose and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his house, and there was a large company of tax collectors and others reclining at table with them. And the Pharisees and their scribes grumbled at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. This blew the Pharisees, even though the Pharisees knew that Jesus will come, what he came for. But yet they were blind. They were so busy with the law and so lawful that they didn't have their hearts open to understand the simple truth that Jesus didn't come here to save for the Pharisees. He came to call the righteous. I mean, he came to call the sinners to repentance. He said, those who are all don't need a physician. They don't need a physician. It's those who are sick and those... That's why he came. He didn't have to. But because of his love, he came here to die for me, to call sinners to repentance. If Jesus didn't come, 
there'd be no cross, no suffering, no resurrection. Those things could not happen without Jesus coming here. Why was he born in a manger, not some king's house or some palace? He made it so the very simple people can have access to him. If we read Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 15. And in the same region there was shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased when the angels went away from them into heaven the shepherds said to one another let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us people like the shepherds would not be able to come to Jesus if Jesus would be born in a palace, if Jesus came on a king's chariot. But Jesus made that possible. Interesting enough, when they heard this news, they didn't say, what about our family? Who's going to watch our flock? If you've noticed, they literally said, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. They didn't stop. They didn't wait. They were probably confused. They didn't doubt it. They didn't sit there and say, should we go? Should we not? They did it. Something that we have to do. When God tells me something, I must do it. Not sit. Not be confused. Just do it. Trust God. Now, Christmas is not just about presents, having fellowship, the food, the parties, like I said before. It's not even just about celebrating Jesus' birthday, like People say, what's Halloween? It's the devil's birthday. What's Christmas? That's Jesus' birthday. No, it's it's not that. He didn't just come. He didn't just say, hey, I'm here. And he had a mission. He came here to fulfill his father's will. Like he said, I'm here to fulfill my father's will. Jesus left all his glory to be with us sinners. Just imagine that. This picture that Jesus left heaven to be with me. To die for us. And not just to die, to get his head cut off, to maybe get shot, to suffer a painful death, to go through humiliation, through the spitting on him, through everything that he went just for me, to reconcile us. And why do we often reject that? Why do I reject Christ in my life? He wants to have a relationship with his creation. He wants to be with me. He made it possible for that to happen. He literally did everything for me to have a relationship with me, to save me. Yet, I oftentimes don't care. I just want to live my life until something happens and we run back to Jesus. If you've noticed that happen in your life, I've noticed it in my life. I don't need God right now. Something happens. Oh no, God, forgive me. I need you. God, please come heal me. Do this, do this. I need you right now. And my, it, it's too late, dude. You should keep Christ the center of your life always. This Christmas, keep Christ centered. I challenge you to keep Christ centered. I know we hear this a lot. You hear this a lot. You hear sermons. Keep Christ centered. Keep Christ centered. We say it every year and we fail every single year. Last year we said it. We failed. This year we say it. Now I'm not saying that we will always literally fail. But I'm just saying that we say it every year. But we don't do it. Don't get caught up in everything. We read Luke chapter 10. The story of Mary and Martha. Verse 38 to 42. Luke chapter 10. Verses 38 to 42. Now as they went on their way. Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. 
But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This picture, the story is so realistic, so close and personal to us. We often get caught up like Martha. She was distracted with much serving, preparing the food, everything. And she literally came up to Jesus and said, Do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Can you imagine? Martha comes up to Jesus and says, Jesus, are you serious? Mary here is doing nothing. I'm preparing. I'm doing all these things that are good. Do you really not care? Tell her to help me. Jesus doesn't say, okay, Mary, go help her. He doesn't say, oh, Martha, this and this. He literally says, Martha, Martha, you're anxious and troubled about many things. Martha, right now, you are worrying about a lot. A lot of things are in mind. But one thing is necessary. And that one thing is to be with me. That one thing is to have a relationship with me. And Mary has chosen the good portion that will not be taken away from her. Let us not get caught up in everything and miss the main reason of Christmas. Why did Jesus come here? He came to save a sinner like me. Now I have to serve. I have to give back. It's good that we are busy cooking, cleaning, preparing, but it takes our eyes off Jesus a lot. I challenge you, think about how you can keep Christ-centered. How can you give more time to Him, even in cleaning in preparing, how can I glorify God? It literally says in everything that you do, glorify God. Let all the praise be to Jesus. So when I'm preparing, when I'm doing all these things, let me keep that in mind. Even when I'm preparing, let me be thinking about Jesus. About what he has done for me. Merry Christmas and God bless you this Christmas. To understand why it's crucial. It's crucial because there would be no cross. We wouldn't be saved. But Jesus made that possible for all of us.